Los Angeles is a dynamic and ever-evolving destination that welcomes everyone. In fact, over 140 nationalities call the city home, so it's no surprise that this melting pot of ethnicities and cultures has resulted in a vibrant culinary scene. Today, I'm going to share five restaurants that you should check out the next time you're in the City of Angels. It wouldn't be a foodie tour of LA without a visit to the bustling neighborhood of Koreatown. Here you will find the largest population of Koreans outside of their home country and, of course, some incredible food. Kicking off our list at number five is Open Air, located at K-Town's coolest hotel, The Line. Created in collaboration with two-star Michelin chef and native Angelino, Josai Citrine, Open Air is a celebration of indoor, outdoor living and fresh Cali ingredients. Uh, how do you describe the cuisine here and the experience for patrons? I like to describe the cuisine as a uh, globally inspired but market driven cuisine. Yep. So a lot of different flavors from around the world. Right now the current food scene in LA is blowing up. We have so many great restaurants and what's really cool here is that you know we have a lot of different cultures and what they're doing is they're like they've all worked in like high-end restaurants and now they're taking their their heritage cuisine or their you know their home cuisine and taking it to another level. What's uh, some of the signature dishes and drinks that you serve here? So we make a duck ragu with uh, this duck from Sonoma County, grind the duck with porcini mushrooms, homemade parpadelli pasta, pecorino and pistachios. Yeah. Another one is we do a beets. We smoke the beets with like a spice mix mm -hmm. and then we serve it with whipped almonds and lemon. And for cocktails, yeah. our midnight margarita is definitely one of our signature dishes. It's one of my signature dishes in all my restaurants. For my number four spot, I'm headed to the SLS Hotel Beverly Hills and into the Bazaar by Spanish-American chef Jose Andres. This place offers boundlessly creative and sophisticated interpretations of tapas, presented playfully as a culinary journey. Even the cocktails here transcend well beyond the ordinary into true art. In fact, the Bazaar was recently announced as a recommended dining experience in the California Michelin Guide. While Sumni, inside the Bazaar, is a two-star recipient, making the SLS Hotel the only property in Southern California with two restaurants in the guide. The idea is to have a traveling experience. So you want to go into Bar Centro, you want to start off with a tapa and a cocktail and kind of get your palate going, and then come into Rojo or Blanca, have you know your dining experience, and then gravitate over to Patisserie and have your dessert experience. Tell me about the menu. So we have about 60 to 70 dishes on the menu, uh, depending upon menu change and seasonality and what's going on. So one thing we wanted to do for you today was make sure that we did one of our traditional items that we've been known for and is a staple since day one, which is our Philly cheesesteak that has a airbread filled with piscalini cheddar espuma and wagyu beef carpaccio on top. Um, we've been serving it since day one. It's something that we've been known for. Um, it's a crowd pleaser. What's this called on the menu, this dish? It's our beef tartare. We have a little bit of chiffonade mint. Yeah, to me, LA is a very multicultural city. You've got a lot of different influence from around the world. How do you bring that into the food that you prep here in the kitchen? I think it's really the type of mood I'm in. Uh, you know, when we sit there and we think about dishes and start brainstorming and thinking of creativity, it's wherever your head runs. Do I put it all in one go? You can do a double biter if you want. Ah, and I'm going all the go way. Go for it. Yeah. Go all the way. This is beautiful. I'm now heading east to downtown LA. The revitalization of the neighborhood over the last decade has resulted in a wave of cool new openings, including the ever popular Ace Hotel. The hotel is housed in the former United Artists building and includes the original cinema. So at number three on our list is Best Girl, which is named after the first film played at the cinema way back in 1927. This neighborhood bistro is the brainchild of Michael Simarusti, owner and chef of one of LA's best seafood restaurants, Providence. Down here where we're sitting is Best Girl. It's like our signature restaurant in the hotel. We were trying to basically build a menu that's approachable to the locals, uh, kind of ties in some of the culture of the downtown area. Uh, you have like a lot of home style, kind of like elevated diner food in here. The city's so wide, like you can open up anywhere. You know, there's like multiple facets to the city. Yeah. And that's why you have such a diverse culture of like new creative stuff in terms of like food and beverage, but yeah. also like artists and musicians and different developments that are popping up in different parts. Like the arts district is night and day compared to what it was four yeah. years ago. 
completely different 10 years ago. Yep. Uh, and it's still expanding, so. Yeah, so BTU Burger, uh, it features like a bitty, tasty ume sauce. Uh, we've got a dill relish on it. Basically a classic burger. Take a little bit of this stuff off, like it's not coming with tomatoes and lettuce and whatnot. Uh, this is Simarusti's. Michael Simarusti is like one of his signature burgers. Make sure to head upstairs to the rooftop bar, appropriately named Upstairs. Hotel Dining is having a serious moment right now, with a lot of properties attracting a myriad of world-class chefs that feed just as many locals as international visitors. This is certainly true of our number two spot, situated a few blocks away in DTLA, the Nomad Hotel. It's located in the historic Gianni Place building, which once served as the headquarters for the Bank of Italy. A meticulous restoration process has ensured your dining experience maintains old school grandeur. You have seriously one impressive office. <laughs> like, I mean, it's cool, right? I walked in here and was just like, <gasps> yeah. look at this place. When it's Friday night and it's popping and yeah. everything going, if you, if you stand up there, you get a badass view of just everything and it looks just so cool. I'm not exactly sure on the date it was built, but I know it was built in the early 1900. Um, and it was the old Bank of Italy. And if you actually head downstairs, you'll see the old vault that what is now our restrooms. Oh, I just went in there. It's cool, right? For those who haven't come here, how do you describe what you see in here? Um, I think number one is just, you know, we try to like pay tribute to the old building and try to keep a lot of the old stuff in place. Yeah. But then still try to make it, you know, new and modern and fun. Okay, so what do we got in All here? All right, so we're looking at our milk and honey dessert. Yeah. It is the signature of our restaurant here at the Nomad. It's composed of a honey oat shortbread, a dehydrated milk foam, a honey brittle, um, milk ice cream, with an avocado honey here that we get at the Hollywood Farmer's Market, and then it's finished with a little fleur de sel. Yeah. <laughs> it's 11 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> this is next level. When we say LA's food scene is a reflection of its rich immigrant culture, this perfectly describes number one on our list, Rose and Blue, located in DTLA's City Market South. The family-run eatery tells the story of Chef Steve Sampson's two homes, Los Angeles and Bologna in Italy. Patrons can enjoy homemade pastas, market fresh produce, and an in-house butchery. Describe the experience of this restaurant and what you're trying to create here with the cuisine. Oh, well, it um, comes from our chef's heart and soul. Um, it is northern Italian. Today what we're doing is the um, orata. Okay. Now, orata is a sea bream or a durat, uh, similar to uh, bronzino, which people know very well. Yeah. It's a white fish, it's mild, it's light, it's sweet, and um, it's done on a wood fire burning grill. Um, where we do a lot of our proteins. The next dish is, um, I guess, the heart and soul of what we do here. It's tagliatelle ragu bolognese, it's handcrafted pastas, which we, we do here. Everything is by hand, made lovingly by hand, um, by a spolino that we have, a pastaiolo guy who makes specifically just concentrate on making our pasta. Oh my gosh, is this just for tonight? It's just a part. Just for tonight? Just for tonight, just for two hours of tonight. Two hours of tonight? Yeah, because during the weekend we're really busy, so yeah, yeah. we are still in the middle of the production here. As you can see, the pasta is really fresh. I need to dry this pasta a little bit more so yeah. I can cut. So this is dried out from earlier? Yeah, this is still fresh as you can oh, okay. see. But the thing is that when it's too fresh, you can fold the pasta oh, like, okay. a, like a, a newspaper. Beautiful handcrafted tagliatelle pasta, which is a ribbon noodle, a little bit thinner. Um, and then it's with this beautiful uh, meat ragu, uh, pork and beef ragu with a little bit of tomato sauce. But the one thing that we literally say on our menu is uh, tagliatelle ragu alla bolognese, not too much sauce. There you have it, five incredibly diverse and world-class restaurants that you have to try the next time you're in LA. For more information, head to discoverlosangeles.com.